Hi, this is Angie with Flippin' Fanchers, and welcome to part three of our church pew makeover. My way to bed. Magic rainbows glisten in my head. Just like a child, I live in Wonderland. All my dreams are coming. Hi, uh, for this project, the finishing up of the bench, we're going over five different kind of uh, painting techniques. The first one will be the spray paint. Second one is the, uh, the glaze, the crackle glaze. Third will be just the regular paint with the paintbrush. Fourth will be the stencil. And the fifth technique that we're gonna have will be with the, um, the wax. I hope you enjoy, and if you have any questions, leave those down below in the comments. First coat of paint is on. It looks gorgeous so far. got our bench painted it's in the house and right now I'm going to put a stencil on it uh, so I cut this stencil out using my um, silhouette cameo it's kind of framed to here with uh, painters tape so I don't get paint all over my my bench um, and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and paint it black but in order to soften it up you'll see that I'll be using wax over it so, but like I said, I just kept, kept this with my Silhouette Cameo and I'm going to use my roller and just go over it a little bit. The trick is not to get too much um, paint onto your brush so it doesn't bleed through. And I'm going to use a small roller just kind of get all this paint off here. It's better to have not enough paint on there and make two or three passes than to have way too much and it'll bleed through. It'll bleed through the stencil. let that dry for just a couple minutes and then I'll go through it probably I give it about two coats or two or three coats probably three coats and I'll be back okay I let this completely dry uh, some people like to take it off whenever it's wet but um, I like to wait till it's completely dry I've done it both ways and uh, it's bled through whenever it's really wet before so um, I'm going to go ahead and take this off and we'll see what we got. For the little pieces, I usually use um, some tweezers 
just don't dig too hard into the wood because it um, just you could see the dig marks so I took the stencil off and this is the finished look it says our vintage home um, what I'm going to do next is distress everything and then I'll put a clear wax on it and then I'm going to use some antique wax over there so I'm going to do that um, so if you want to know what kind of, of paint I used for this stencil it's this Waverly ink well, it's not going to um, there it goes the Waverly ink so it just used it, it didn't take too much because it's pretty thick so it's a chalk paint I'm using is this belt uh, sandpaper it's for a belt sander and you know usually it goes like this on a belt sander um, it's a 120 grit so it's pretty core it's kind of coarse and uh, I'm just going through here on places that people would actually kind of sit and wear so mostly on the legs on the arms and I'm just going through here and wrapping it up like this so it looks like it has some wear and tear I'm not going to put too much pressure on it though because I don't want to get all the way down to the actual um, brown wood part we're just doing a light for the just to get the white to show through I'm not going to do too much of it um, because after I do the the distressing I wipe off all the dust and then I'm going to do a clear wax coating on it and I'll show you why I do that in a minute I have it distressed to where I want it and now I'm going to be putting on this this the wax and this is a clear wax um, I'm just using the clear satin from Valspar and I'm just going to be putting that on the top now the secret to applying the wax to the whatever you're doing is you have to think of it sort of like sort of like a um, lotion to where you don't want to just glob it on um, and just let it sit for a long time you just need to actually work it in work it in really well so I need to stir this so it takes about an hour for it to completely dry what I'm going to do uh, you work in small sections and um, just you just put it in a circular motion and then you can take about an hour and then wipe it off or don't wipe it completely off just wipe the excess off and then start with another section you can do that one section at a time so what I'll do is I'll, I'll work on it and then show you my first section and then um, I'll just get the rest done It doesn't take much either. Okay, I put a thin layer of clear wax over here and I'm not actually going to wipe that off yet. Um, the reason why I'm going to apply the antique wax over that is so that way I can um, it won't stain the wood um, beneath it. It won't be too dark. I don't want it too dark. So I just put a small amount of the antique wax on my brush. I don't want too much. And I have I'm using the brown antique wax. And 
just put this on my brush. I go in circular motions and make sure I get in the grooves really well. I'm just going to do this little section for you. Because it's going to take me a while to get everything done. And I'm using a, a new clean brush. Okay, I'll just do that little section. And then you immediately wipe it off with a a cloth, lint free, just a regular cloth that you just if, that you can throw away. Still, I just use a tiny bit and there's still a lot on this on this rag. And the reason why you want to work in sections like this is because if you make a bit, if you do your whole thing, then the part that you worked on first is already dried, so it's really hard to remove. And if you think that you've made it, that you've gotten too much, it's maybe too dark, say right, I'm gonna say right here. Then you can go through with your clear wax and go over it again. And just wipe it off. And as you can see, it's really lightened that up. On this part, it's really lightened that up a lot. So you can always redo that by just going over it with some more clear wax. As you can see, the church pew is done, and it turned out so good. The next thing that I want to do for it is to make a cushion. Uh, so I, I'll probably film that video soon. It's just make a cushion to, um, I'll film it, I'll sew the cushion up myself and put it on there, but until then, and I'm going to consider this project as done. I'm going to zoom in on our stenciling. And you could see on a portion of it that it is has that brown antiquish look from the um, antique wax that I used. And as you can see on this side, I do have the magazine racks up. They work perfectly for magazines. And if you remember from the last video, that was the in the back of the church pew. They have the songbook holder. And we took those off and we just shortened them, just cut off a portion of them and to make them work on the sides there so we can have some something for magazine holder. And that's it. It's a nine foot long church pew. And it's going to make great seating in our home. So I want to thank everybody for watching. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more DIY projects or uh, flea market flips. Um, and also some flea market hauls that we will we'll do as well. So hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Uh, so you know when we'll do our next video. Until then, bye. All my dreams are humming. All my dreams.